Hi and welcome to another video. This time we're actually not Nardka World, we are showcasing the search system that my friend Rad and I made about a couple of weeks ago. And yeah, to give you a bit of a backstory, we both were around the same thing in Nardka World, around the 800 to 900. And we both wanted the search system, but I myself don't like doing the item layouts, item filters, all that kind of stuff, and Rad doesn't like storage tag too much, so yeah, we teamed up and got to work, and uh, but decided we are not gonna go with anything that is too too crazy, like crabs, for example. As you can see here, that looks like a lot, and it is a lot. It is way too much for any regular player, or even players that do like tag, but it's. It's just way too much, and there's nothing really that is a little bit less complicated. Because from there it just goes straight down to straight up impulse sorters, which we didn't like either, so we decided to do our own. And uh, this is where we are at now. We have a system that sorts every item in the game. We have a big bike section here with sugar loaders. And box of space, I'm gonna explain them later as well. We have a chest hall going around here, all this long corridor and the right wing, and in the entry we have a multi-item sorter, which will sort most of the items, about two-thirds, I think. But uh yeah, also has a couple of some other features that I'm gonna go through in a second. But yeah, I kinda wanna go th through the system along with the items, like how they will I'll pass through here. So we're gonna start over here with the inputs. We have sugar box input, so we throw all our sugar boxes in here. All the loose items we will throw into this sugar box. And from here they will travel down into the sugar unloaders. So the sugar is gonna be going into this dropper. Loose items gonna go past that into this chest on here, going straight into the system. But we're gonna focus on the sugars first. So they will go into here as soon as there's any sugar box in this in this dropper. If there's any sugar box in here, this clock starts and slowly fills up all of those sugar unloaders. We have 10 of them. That's one of our requirements, having a bunch of those so we get fast sugar return. Of course, once that is all full, it will get a lot slower, but the first 30 to 40 sugar boxes, they will come back out very fast. They're gonna be coming out all the way over here in this dropper line. They'll come out over here. They will pop out in the sugar box storage over here. From there, the items go over this filter here. There's a stackable filter, so we have a chest button here. Let's grab another unstackable like leggings, for example. So there's always gonna be one in here, but if you throw this in here, see so this lights up and this is now in here and those go all the way across we're gonna have the leggings here in a second just by that i mean yeah there it is from there every other item goes into this system here it's all the way up here with the dropper line and over the bulk section which i do have a couple of filters here still, so you can see it all normal impulse filters um they get loaded into sugar boxes and when they are full, they get that gun down into the chest with a box display. So you can always just go here, grab the couple stacks out. If you only if you can just grab those couple out. And if you take it all everything out, place the sugar box with a new one. As long as you have enough boxes in the chest. And then the boxes from there as well go into here. Yep, there it is. So now we come around. All the way, we have 64 box loaders here, that's plenty. And we come over to the first chest slices, they are all regular impulse sorters. So nothing special over there. We have a couple of them on this side going over to here. We have a bunch of auto potion brewers over here. So there we have 16 of those. And basically, as soon as you take out a potion here, out of this chest, so this barrel is always full of potions. As soon as this one is empty, it brews a new potion for you. Don't have to do anything. Then you can show that over here in this one. So this is one with all the filters set, with everything done. We 
Yeah, for example, a jump boost here with the recipe. Also, first item recipe is the last one in the system here, and then we have other ones coming from the first: the rabbit's foot and the glowstone. We jump boost two. We grab stuff out of here. This is empty, and it's gonna browse our new potion. And then after this, we come across. We have a lot more chest slices over here. This is another total of. 160 slices, I believe. Yes, it is. And then we have a couple more slices over here. Until then, we have another side with nine instead of eight. And then we have our multi item sorter, which is done by Meizuma. It's a very, very simple one. Sim sim simplest one we could find. And yeah, basically, and just can sort every single thing into one chest layer. So for example, we have. All pottery shards in one, we have all banners in one, say all stairs, all glass panes, and so on. And we can sort up to, I think, 2600, almost 2600 individual items in here. So that's gonna be where there's most of the items. About, I think, about two thirds are sorted in here and one third in the rest. And with this having almost 2600 slots for, for filled items, it's definitely going to be enough for any future update. And we also have an item layout here for the all the uh, bulk section and the chest hall, which was made by Rad or Radical Adult on YouTube and Twitch. You might know him from there. And we also have one section completely empty here. And you can, of course, remove stuff from here, like nether bricks, for example. You don't have to shook a lot of them, like cactus, like pork chop leather, and so on. This is just based off both of our play styles to fit our, our needs. And you can, of course, do your own layouts. Like this one is completely empty. That's just gonna be something you can do for your own. You can decide for your own what items should go where. And yeah, besides that, we also have use for all the corners. We have sugar box input here and the side input over there in this corner. We do have an, a hidden enchanting room, so if you Press this button, open the door, and we have a level 30 enchantment area here. So if I, for example, grab a helmet, I have a level 30 enchantment area here with some sort of for your lapis, for tools, armor, whatever you want, and an anvil and the grindstone. So all you can need is in here, and you can just close the button again, and you can barely see it here. In this corner we have all your workstations, we've got the stone cutter, the smithing table, loom, other for tables, and so on. And the last corner here we have a small bedroom, sleep here, set your spawn, have an armor stand if you want to display some armor, some more storage if you want to, and the chest, crafting table. And yeah, you also have a crafting table on every second pillar, so no matter where you are, you're always close to that. We put our portal over here, because we both like having space in the center to move around. And we're also able to do a zombie pickling trap on the side here. So if we have a zombie pickling, for example, doesn't matter where it spawns, it can spawn all the way in the right in the portal. It will still see the turtle leg we have out here and fall down here and die on the wither roots. Now, to be not keeping drops, the drops get just straight. This paints into lava. Well, if they dropped something, this one didn't. But yeah, that's all that's visible. We do have Soul Sand Floor, which you don't have to do. It's it's optional. If you're Soul Speed on your boots, you can obviously move around quite fast, increase the speed a little bit. But of course, don't have to do that. You can replace it with any block you want. And we have a water source over here. So if you grab a bucket, we have a water source under this slab here. So just hidden down here to be two water source. But yeah, we do have a maintenance store, so for all the sugar dispensing the first time and any maintenance, we do have this door, you have this ladder where you can set your recipes for all the auto brewers, restock all the uh, ingredients if you if you have those. And if you head down here, we once have the auto brewer on off over here, so if you flick this lever that you turn them on or off. They're currently in the off state because we don't have any ingredients in here and on no potions in here. So if it's off, it doesn't trigger when when the hopper is empty. Over here we have the first box dispensing for the sugar loaders. So if you just have no 
focus on it yet, you just press the button twice, slowly, don't spam the button, press it once, wait for the piston to retract, you're gonna hear that, press it a second time, and you will hear a shulker box dispensing. If you do that, that for all of this side, and the same thing over here as well. Exactly the same thing, press all the buttons twice to dispense the first shulker box. And again, don't spam it. Over here, we have the sugar box distribution. We're gonna come back to that in a second. And the last area here is the uh, box display. So as soon as you have more than two boxes in here, you can press the knob block and display the first box. You have to press it twice again. And again, don't spam it. Otherwise, you will break adjacent boxes if you spam it too fast. But uh, yeah, that's, that's all there is for the maintenance paths. You can reach everything from down here. But one thing I gotta recommend before you start on the minecarts, well, basically before you start building overall, you remove this one hopper. So once a day, you, you remove this one hopper or you leave that one out so that in case anything falls in the, in the unloaders, in the uh, single item input, loose item input, anything, it just stops there, it doesn't go into the system, doesn't go through there before you have finished it. And the first thing you're gonna come by when you build it is the minecarts, which are a bit tricky. All you gotta do is Place those two rails here, get a fence gate, you place on the supper, and put your minecart down. Make sure to not step on the minecart. I break the fence gate, put the rail back down. And you have the minecart on this angled position. After you've done the minecarts, the first next thing you will get to is this hopper, which will display three items in there in the schematic. I would recommend doing those after you finish the build. So after you've done the whole thing, then I would add all the items in the hoppers and droppers. So we have three in there, 10 in here, in that order, this one first, this one second. And then we have one more clock to do. This one over here has 30 items in this hopper. You can do this one while you do it or after, doesn't matter, doesn't change anything. I'm just gonna make sure it's this hopper over here. Otherwise there's no other clock that has any items in it or not. We just have the multi-item sorter, which has a few filters in there. First of all, you need to make sure you have two items in this hopper over here. You have a total of one banner that is unique, 70 banners of another one, and then three banners of a third type. So we have one, 17, three, and three shears. In this minecart, I would recommend removing this block while you do this. So minecart doesn't mess up, doesn't do anything. You put this one in here. The one that is unique, you put this one in here. You put 15 of the one you have 17 on, you put this one, put those into the second slot and then three shears into the last three slots. One of these you had 17 of, you're gonna put one of these in the hopper up here. And then one of the remaining one into the second slot here and the last three into the last three slots here. Again, those should not get into the storage at any point in time. They will break the multi-item sorter and it will basically stop working and you have to redo all the banners. And then for all the item filters here, I recommend starting with this dropper down below, completely full with snowballs. Then you do this hopper over here, two snowballs, four shears. Then I recommend doing the double chest here, which has the filter items. So it's locked off with shears right now, but if you want to sort iron blocks, you put one item in here. Now, now it will sort, sort iron blocks. If you want to sort rails, you put one rail in there. Basically one item of the ones you want to sort, then, and then the rest full with shears. That is how it works. And then you do this hopper, you place this novel in here, you will get one back in the first slot. You take this one out, put it down here. The easiest to do this is from above here. So if you stand on here, you can put this novel in here, get one back. You can reach down here into this hopper and put this novel in. That's the one in front you use for all the slices, all food air slices. And for the back, you have this one full of snowballs and one snowball in here. Definitely make sure this one is correct. You can check that by once you finish it by just checking the comparator back here, if that one, if those are all reading an output, they all those have one snowball in them. Only other thing that needs pre-fill are the uh, auto brewers. We have 
Brewing Sandwich needs. Blaze Powder, you can put a stack in there. Don't put more than two stacks in here, otherwise the water bottles won't go through, won't get picked up. So yeah, but I don't think you will ever need more than two stacks of Blaze Powder anyways. This one, this dispenser over here, behind here, full of glass bottles, as many as you can afford. And this hopper over here, we have off any stack of item, we have 19, 1, 1, and 1. It's a total of 22 items. And if you do a recipe, over here we have the jump boost, which is nether ward, rabbit's foot, and glowstone. You need to pre-fill the brewing stand with one nether ward, so you always need to pre-fill it with the first item in the recipe. And then you put the first item in the recipe, you put it in the, into the last slot. So we have slot 1, 2, and 3. We have a total of 5 slots that are supported. You have the first item of the recipe in the last one, and then the second one is in the first. The third one is in the second, and so on. I just take the first one, put it to the back, and move the rest forward. Yeah, before you fill anything into the storage, you need to pre-fill all of this with sugar boxes so we have the sugar loaders and you have to pre-fill those two chests with sugar boxes they will empty out into the system it's about 1800 sugar boxes for the whole thing it will back up all the way to over here where the first ones are it's always one dropper that will fill up and one hopper and you're gonna do this until those two are full as long as this one is empty this piston will will not be extended this one's this one will be in this state over here. So this will just be like that until this one is filled up over here. As soon as the, those stop emptying out and they are full, you can start pressing the buttons. So we need to refill those, both of those again until they are full in this hopper as well. After that, don't forget that, you will need to go down here and fill this top chest up with sugar boxes as well. So this should be full as well as those two hoppers. Should be full as well. Every time you unload sugar boxes, they will pass this hopper. If this one is empty, they will go into this system down here. And only if this one is full, they will go into the empty box storage up there in those four chests over here. And with that, we're just making sure that you will never run out of sugars to sugar load stuff without actually having to be there and fill them up constantly. You might notice the decrease in empty boxes you get back, but those will go into the storage either way if you fill them up manually. Um, but yeah, that's all I have to say about the storage so far without explaining everything. I'll do that in a second. Explain all this individual parts on how all works while we chose that specific part. And uh, yeah, if, you, if you just want to build it now, if you don't want to hear the explanations, have fun with it. And make sure to make sure you follow all the steps. And also, don't forget, after you've done everything, to put this hopper back down here. Don't forget that before you do the first input. Very important. But yeah, if you want to just want to build it from now, have fun with it. Red and I had a lot of fun building this. It's been, been a great time. And we were very happy with how this turned out. And I hope, I hope you guys like it as well. But yeah, you can find the schematics in the video description as well. As well as I download. So there will be one for this one without without any filters. And there will be one for the one with the filter items in there already. If you want to if you wanna take that one. If you want to go with our layout. You can of course do that. But uh, yeah, you can also customize it very easily. Like you can replace everything you want. You can replace all the darker strip dark hug logs, you can replace all the soul sand, all the carpet. One thing you shouldn't replace, those. You can press those with glass, of course, but I just recommend leaving those sea lanterns there for some lighting as well. You can, you can replace these stairs, these trap doors. For the most part, everything that is dark oak, you can replace. But yeah, there's like, I have a few examples for some design showcases. So we have this one over here, that is Radical Elder Storage that they built in this new hardcore world. In this hardcore world on YouTube, it's going to be in the upcoming episode on the weekend. I think that's going to be coming out. So definitely go and watch that. I'm building this in that episode. So that's 
Obviously very different, you replace the stairs with those slabs, put walls in here, extra barrels and buttons that do nothing, but it's just for decoration, and ob obviously a roof on top. But they are all a very nice design. And then we also have the one that I made myself for my solar system. That is this one, bit of an extended roof, thing with all the dark oak. Some mangrove in there as well. You can you can design it however you want. So definitely don't use other sort of schematics. They are slightly outdated of the redstone. Some this one is a few weeks outdated. This one is not as outdated, but still not as new as well. So definitely stick with those sort of schematic, and then you can decide what you build on top. But yeah, I think that's all I have to say about the storage so far. I'll go into the expanding after the single components in a second. But if you feel comfortable building this now without any further explanation, definitely have fun with it. Schematics are going to be in the world download folder as well. One for this one, one for this one with all the items for the set as well. So you have both options. If you're going to go with these item filters, you can do that, of course. If you want to make your own, you can go with this one here. But yeah, for all the components, I'm going to, I'm again going to go with the item flow. So. From the from the sugar box inputs, the sugar boxes will go into this dropper over here. Once there's a sugar box in here, this piston will extend over here, unpowering this line, unlocking the hopper clock over here. So this this one is locked over here. This one's locked this hopper here, keeping the items in here, so this one doesn't change anymore. It will unlock this. It will go over once already. Every time this one pulses, it drops one item from here into this dropper, counting down from 10 to 0. If it is on 0, the torch will light up, locking the piston again to turn it off. Every time it pulses as well, it also just drops one shulker box into the system and it stops at 10. So we have 10 unloaders here. And every time you put a shulker box in one of the unloaders, take a shulker box, fill it with a few items. If you put one shulker box in here, it will lock this hopper so nothing can go in there anymore, so it will pass over. Dispense it down here, pull this redstone block up, pull this one down, and unpower the trailer. Unpowering the trailer unlocks this hopper minecart down here. And you can see, items get in here with double hopper speed, and then come down here into this line at single hopper speed, going over the it over here and then come out of the not connected right now so they will all just drop out of, out up here but that is how it works we can also just disconnect this up and down here really quick so this don't get any spill up there but yeah if you just fill this up completely with sugar boxes if you have let's say 10 sugar boxes in here they'll fall and there's a few more it just unlocks this pulls us once twice three times and so on. Every single time you can see one item gets dropped over there, one sugar box gets dropped as well, and they all fill up one by one. And there is one, and another one in the end here. And we have no one left over in here. Then if we, if this one, let's say this one is empty, it will send a signal over here, pulsing one item from here back over there, one single item which unlocks this again, pulses once, see there it goes one, the next one, and it just goes so on until every sugar box is out of this dropper in here. And I have a few more in here. And there goes another one, and we are back at all full. And 10 items in this dropper, this dropper over here again. And just keep doing that until this one is empty out of sugar boxes. Here you can see again empty boxes go either over this way or, or in here if this is not full. And this is again a single slice. It was made by Pure Left, one of the members in Storage Tag and a bunch of other tech discords. Yeah, then we have the sugar box loader over here, which is made by Balkan. I'll link to leave the link to his YouTube in the description as well. But uh, yeah, very simple. Item goes in here, gets filtered down here in the, into the sugar box. 
as it goes in here, once the sugar box is full, the sequence length of here changes from 14 to 15, goes the sugar box is full. The observer sees that Luxus Hopper for a split second, which this one can detect, and then passes the piston once, breaks the sugar box. This one goes back down to 14. So we do this again. Another cycle back here, passes the piston again, pulling the observer back, and this painting a new sugar box. Rock sugar boxes go down here into the storage, which they're gonna be collected down in here. For the box display, the first time you have to press this button to dispense the sugar box. So for this one, let's say we have cobblestone in here, so we have six sugar boxes in here. If you press the button once, we only get one sugar box in here, we get, don't get anyone disp any sugar boxes dispensed yet. Press it a second time, we get the box dispensed so you can access it. One buffer is in here, those two are empty, and this piston extended. But if we take now and out of this sugar box, it slows down now to have it a bit more visual. This one gets pulled up, house this piston, so it gets pushed over, pushed back almost immediately. Powers this one down here and dispenses the sugar box again, which this one then gets extended again without actually doing anything. So we're back to normal speed. And yeah, this is the uh, sugar, sugar box display, which was made by me with a bit of help of the storage tech discord. So definitely go join there, have a look at all their awesome designs. But uh, yeah, then we have the multi item sorter, which was made by Meizuma. This one is probably the simplest multi item sorter there is. It is way more simple than Moonimus or Cartmus or Ganges Miss or any other there is. Might be a bit slower, but it is way, way, way simpler to build. That's why we chose this one. And now it goes for this for the shock was loader, very simple one. And the shock was unloader, also fairly simple as the one white high level one. For the multi item sorter and the auto brewer as well, I won't be going into too much detail, but both of those have a video explaining those already. So definitely go check those out by Rex and Foyota Bro and by Meizuma Games for the multi item sorter. So I'll leave both of those in the description as well. They can probably explain it way better than I could ever. So definitely go watch those videos if you want to know how they work exactly. Change a bit of the misuse. So I added this over here so every time it the input is empty it just triggers all the droppers here once so any leftover snowballs would go back into the original position as well as going away from a detection based system here for the minecart release to a time based one so basically as soon as this starts unloading over there we unpower this rail so we, we retract the piston and as soon as it's Finish unloading, we get another signal here starting this clock, which is exactly a minute. And once this runs out, we pound this rail again, ensuring that every item could go all the way through before the minecart goes again. And uh, yeah, that's all I'll change about this one. The full, ex full explanation you're gonna get from Meizuma if you want that, of course. And full explanation on this one you're gonna get from Rex and both. Very, very smart people and way, way better at explaining this than I could ever. But uh, yeah, I think that is all I have to say about all the components as well. If you have any questions about any of this, or got something, if I didn't explain something correctly, or if I missed a step here and here or there, definitely let me know. First time I've done one of these type of videos, so I might, I might, might have forgotten one thing, thing here or there. So definitely let me know in the comments. Does any further questions, any further requests, any things that I could add that are too much or whatever, let me know. But uh, yeah, I hope I hope you enjoyed it. I've enjoyed the explanation of this star system. There will be one world download of this one with uh, all the layouts, all the designs, and the component layout as well as the schematics of this one and the one in the back there with the item layout as well. And I think I'll also include the uh, item layout document so if you have a simpler 
thing to follow along while collecting all the materials that will be very helpful as well and uh if you have, if you have any more questions definitely go and ask me but uh, yeah i hope, hope you enjoyed the video and uh, i'll be seeing you in the next one bye